Hello, and welcome to a tutorial on uh, classes and objects in Python. If you have come all this way, you are nearing uh, everything you need to know to be a very amateur computer programmer. Uh, you're at the end of the beginning, as we might say, uh, because classes and objects are the last building block of computer programming. Once you understand classes and objects, then it's just uh, finessing your skills, which takes a lifetime to master um, and things like that. Um, and these things translate over to other programming languages. So once you know them in Python, you can transfer them over to other things as well. Um, so congratulations, we are uh, nearing the end of, um, of the beginning of uh, Python programming. So with that said, go ahead and go to your REPL, uh, which we've been using for these tutorials. Uh, click on Python and create a new Python. Um, if you're in one of my classes, I always appreciate it if you name it your name and uh, what the assignment is. So this assignment is classes or classes and objects. Um, so that's what I did there. Create your REPL and it will take you to your blank um, you know, IDE here with your console below. Um, in Python above, I know some of you have uh, your, your uh, coding screen to the left and your console to the right. Um, that's okay. So let's talk about classes and objects. Um, how classes and objects work is they are a way of dividing up your code so that code can be repeated over and over and over again. So it's a way of grouping like things in a computer program uh, together so that you don't have to write functions over and over and over again. You could just give permission to your objects to call the functions from its class. Uh, this will probably make more sense as we get going with sort of the practical stuff this week. Um, but I want you to think real life, like in the real world, everything is divided up into classes and objects. That's part of the scientific project has been classifying things. Um, I, I particularly think of botanists, right? And uh, um, zoologists and all of those uh, wonderful people that, that group things into classes and objects. So think about you right now. Think about yourself. You are probably, if you're watching this, I hope you're a human being. It's always possible someone can leave this on and their cat and dog is watching it, uh, or, or monkey even. Uh, but chances are you're a human being, right? That's what you are. Uh, but that's not all of who you are, is it? Because you're a unique human being. You're a unique um, uh, part of, you have a very unique strand of DNA. You're a unique part of our species. And then as all the inspirational posters for my youth said, there's no one like you. Uh, so you're not just a human being. You are also have a name. Uh, you also have things like a skin color, eye color, hair color, um, you know, how tall you are and all of that. So you have a genetic makeup that is just you. Uh, but that genetic makeup has a lot in common with other human beings. And then, you know, um, other human beings have a lot in common with another uh, species group called mammals, right? Um, and, uh, and so human beings are part of the animal world. I'm going to put my name here, Kevin Lambert, uh, part of the human being. If we wanted to add another uh, class here, we can even say I'm part of the Lamberts family. Um, and because I because my DNA is very in common with my sisters and my children and my parents um, and even my uncles and aunts and grandparents. So, uh, you know, to a lesser extent. So I'm part of the Lamberts. Uh, we could even go one step further and, and, and trace my DNA back to probably a Scottish heritage or uh, an Italian heritage. Um, if we want to, sorry, an Irish heritage. My mom's a Murphy uh, and that's Irish. And so we could even do that. But we'll just say um, I'm Kevin Lambert and that means I'm a Lambert and that means I'm a human being. And that means I'm a mammal. And then there's even a class above that, which is the animal kingdom, uh, which means we are animals. You're an animal. I'm an animal, uh, which uh, goes back to uh, living things, right? Which even goes back to um, goes back to uh, things. <laughs> Speak, you know. Uh, so I'm a thing on the planet Earth. I'm a living thing, not an inert thing. I'm an animal, a mammal, a human being. Lamberts and uh, and my name's Kevin. So there we go. So Kevin Lambert down here would be our object. Uh, Kevin Lambert would be our object, but Kevin Lambert shares a bunch of things in common with all these classes above them. So these would be all parent, um, these well classes. Anything um, it, that is um, has a class above it is called the parent class. So human being is the parent class Lambert's would be the child class because Kevin Lambert in this example is an object. Um, and so parent class, child class. This is another parent class. It's parent of human being. Um, and it's parent of, and this is a parent of mammals. And this is a parent of, um, parent of uh, animals. 
and then this is a parent of living things. Um, so, so these are all our parent classes, and then you have your child class at the bottom, but human being is also the child of mammals. Mammals is also the child of animals. You know how family trees works. It's the same in computer programming. Computer programming is made up of a family tree. Now, let's have some fun, because if we talk about all the things there are, there are two groups, right? There's a living thing and a not living thing. So we could actually create down here, and we're going to use indentation to do it, which the good news about Python, it teaches you good indentation. So let's tab all this stuff in. Um, there we go. And now we could go all the way back out here and create non-living things. You can't see this right now, but I have a coffee mug in front of me. Um, and so non-living things, and then we can create a child class of non-living things uh, that is uh, man-made, we can say, or human-made. Sorry to all the girls out there human made and then we can add another class to that and say it's ceramics because humans make wooden things human makes metal things this is a ceramic thing and then we could go down and we can say coffee mug it's a ceramic coffee mug made by a human and it's a non-living thing um so notice up here we have living things we have animals so now under here we could go back and we can create um non we can create plant right plant would be a parent class um, and, um, and then, um, I have a, uh, evergreen tree outside my door. We'll call it a, an oak tree. Uh, so you have all your specifications. We could create a tree class. Uh, we can create a, um, an evergreen class, and then we can create a, whatever an evergreen tree would be. I'm trying to think of an example of fern. Um, so there you go. Um, so, so that's the real world, right? You have classes and objects and you have parent classes and, and ways of categorizing things. Your computer code can be categorized the exact same way. So, uh, we are going to start today with just doing animals and we're going to start with an animal class and we're going to create two subclasses, two child classes of the animals. Um, and, uh, actually we'll start with mammals. We'll create a mammals class. And um, how that works, I have it over here, is you just write class, and then you give your class a name. So last week, we created functions, and you write def for a function, because you're defining a function, you're naming it. But with class, you just say, say create a new class, name it mammal. Now, um, think about this. What do all mammals have in common? What do all mammals have in common? Make a list. Maybe you said they have fur. They have hair, right? Um they want varying amounts. Whales have tiny little microscopic hair. Um, humans have a little bit of hair. Bears have a lot of hair. My cat and dog have a ton of hair, and they shed it all the time. Uh, so they have fur. They breathe oxygen. That's a huge thing that all mammals have in common, So which means they have hearts. So you can list those things. We're going to write functions for these things now. So we're going to um, first, we're going to create a function called name. So we're going to define um, a name function. Um, and, um, and in fact, uh, yeah, so we're going to define um, a function called named. Remember, uh, functions must have parameters. Um, you're going to use something called self here. Self just means the object itself is one of the parameters, one of the things you can change. Now, we can, we can create um, some functions and variables that are true of every object of that class that they can access. So, um, so self, and then we actually want to just say name too. Uh, we're creating a new variable called name by doing that that we're going to define down here. And we're just going to say self.name equals name. So when we run the name function, it will give a name, assign a name to whatever mammal we create below. Isn't that cool? Um, so the next function we're going to do is maybe a breathes function, and this we're just going to say self, um, and we're going to just say here, uh, we're just going to create a print function, very simple, and we're going to print name, or actually it should be self.name, so whatever the name is of the self, of the object, um, that, plus, and then we're going to say breathes oxygen. So there we go. Um, so now we created a class called mammal. So now let's create an object in that class. Now let's actually create a mammal and let's create someone named Lyle. And we're gonna say Lyle equals a mammal. Um, and let me make sure I did that correctly. Uh, yep. And so, and then you need two parentheses uh, because there's no actual uh, parameters up here. We'll get into that a little bit later. 
So now we're going to write Lyle, and how you run a function is you just say dot named, and we're going to write Lyle. So um, even though we called him Lyle here, he hasn't been named yet according to the computer program. In the same way that when I was born, uh, my parents knew my name was going to be Kevin, but they had to actually sign a birth certificate saying my name was Kevin. So the named function is like signing a, a certificate that lets the computer know this object's name is Lyle. Um, and then we're going to say Lyle dot breathes. And once again, we don't need any parameters because the self is already implied. Uh, so we don't need to write self again. It's already implied. Now, yep, there we go. Lyle breathes oxygen. Uh, so what we did here is this function um, named him Lyle, told the computer what his name was. And then this function um, used the name to print its name and tell us that Lyle breathes oxygen because he's a mammal. Now watch what happens if I only run the breathes function. Watch what happens there. I get a traceback error. Do you see that? Because if you read the very bottom line of that traceback error, it says attribute error, mammal object has no attribute name. The reason for that is because we have not run the named function yet. We have to run that function first. So we have to run lyle.named and tell it its name in the parameter parentheses and then it will run. That's kind of annoying, isn't it? That you have to remember to run that function first. So there's actually a way around that and it's called an init function. Um, so here um, you use two underscores. They're right next to the zero on your keyboard. Um, and it's called an initialize function, which is that function is any time an object in that class's name, then, um, then it will automatically run the init function. You get one free function. I, I learned this yesterday, actually preparing for this assignment. You only get one free function. I didn't know that. Uh, so, the, um, so the class just gives you one free function and it says anything you want to happen the minute this thing is created, then you put it in the init function and you just, you don't name the function, you just call it init with two underscores next to it. Um, so um, now we don't have a named function, so let's delete that, but we put Lyle's name here because this is gonna match up there. Now when we run it, it runs just the same because he's been named. Um, so now watch, um, we can print, um, and in fact, if we wanna do something here to show you how it's working more, we can print self.name plus is born. Um, so there we go. Lyle is born, Lyle breathes oxygen. Now let's create another mammal. Let's name this mammal Herod. So Herod equals a mammal and his name is Harold. Um, so now when we run that, it says Harold is born. So when you, when you name the object for the first time, you can use the init function to tell us it was created, it was born. Isn't that fun? Um, so yeah, so that's a parent class, but now we haven't defined what type of animal Lyle is. So now let's create a new class, but this is going to be a child class of the chart we made earlier. And let's create um, a land-based um, mammal. So we're gonna say land-based, and then in parentheses, we put its parent class. So this gives anything that is land-based permission to use these classes right here, these functions right here. Um, so if we don't have that, they don't, they don't do that. So we created a land-based mammal. Um, and now think what's different from a land-based mammal as opposed to like a whale or a dolphin or a, um, a manatee or something like that. Well, um, land-based mammals have legs usually and walk. Not all of them, but uh, we're going to just pretend that all of them do. So we're going to create a function called walks. Uh, once again, the parameter is just going to be itself. And we're just going to print self.name plus walks on land. Um, and so that means the land-based mammal is going to walk on land. Uh, what else do land-based mammals do? Uh, well, usually they eat uh, foliage vegetation, which is a lot of, um, um, they, they eat a lot of plants. Uh, whales probably do too, but it's underwater. So we're going to do eats plants. And then once again, the parameter is self. And I'm forgetting my colons. Do not forget your colons. Um, and then I'm going to print self.name plus eats plants. Uh, exclamation points are really fun right there. So now Lyle is a mammal, but let's say Lyle is a land-based mammal. And so Lyle's going to breathe, but then Lyle's going to eat plants and Lyle is going to walk. 
Uh, yep, walks. Uh, and so once again, we don't need any parameters here because self is the only parameter there. And there we go. Um, so Lyle is born when we created him. So notice that his name was done up here in this class because this is a child class. It has everything in common with what came above it. So now we're going to create another class, and this is going to be water-based mammals. So once again, looks like that. Don't forget to call it. Now, what do water-based mammals do that uh, plant-based animals maybe don't do? That one's hard for me, so we're just going to pretend we're going to make up some stuff that maybe isn't true. Uh, so we'll just say swims instead of walks, right? Um, actually, um, um, we're going to, uh, well, what, what should we name it? They When they come above water. They emerge, they surface, yeah. So we're going to create a function. They surface. Whales come up for waters. And we're going to print self.name plus um, comes up for air. So they come up for air. They've surfaced. And then we'll create another one. And we'll say eats fish. And then self is the parameter because itself is doing it. So you need to do that. And then self.name plus eats a lot of fish. Yum. There we go say yum because eating fish is yum um so there we go so now lyle is land-based nile cannot also be water-based in computer code anymore in real life he is not a whale he is not a land-based animal um he is land-based so we cannot make a lyle that is also water-based but we can make a water-based mammal that shares all this stuff in common so let's create harold again so we'll bring back Harold, and Harold's going to be a well, and we're going to say water-based, and his name is Harold. Uh, so now when we run it, it's going to say Harold is born. See that? And then Harold now can do everything here. He can surface, he can eat fish, and he can uh, breathe oxygen, but he can't walk on land, and he can't eat plants. Well, he probably can't eat plants, but we're just going to pretend he can't. And computer programming, he can't. In real life, he probably could. Uh, so, yep, he eats plants. Um, and then, so now if I try to say Harold dot, uh, walks, watch what happens. Uh, you probably already know what's going to happen. Error, trace back error. He has no attribute walks because Harold is water-based. Uh, and he can't do the things our land-based friend Lyle can do right up here. So, but if we change that to surfaces right there, um, it still doesn't like us. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, oh, because it was surface. There we go. Uh, yep. There we go. Harold comes up for air. And then we could do Harold.breathes. And Harold. I, I should have made a function that said went back underwater. Uh, but we'll say eats fish. Um, so, so, yep. There we go. Eats a lot of fish. Yum. So, um, so that's a brief tutorial in classes and objects. I actually thought it was going to take me longer to get through all that, um, but we'll play around with it. Uh, that's the assignment if you're following along for one of my classes. Uh, but yeah, fun assignment, right? Um, it's just classes and objects, and all you're doing is creating something above your fun functions. You're grouping your functions together and saying um, that you could create objects, which then in turn can run all these functions. Um, in terms of cleaning up your code, it's always nice to put an enter um between your classes like that um so that people can just see them but yeah so if you have any questions feel free to ask hopefully you enjoyed that little tutorial on classes and objects and now we're now we're free to do some more advanced stuff uh and now we're free to grow in this and learn a lot more so hope you enjoy that